All right, the font we're using in here is terrible, right? It's not the font that we want. And fonts with the web are kind of weird. I'll let you know that. Uh, and first of all, you might have been following along and not even have the same font that I have right now. And that's because if you're on a Mac or if you're on Linux, you'll probably have a different font as a default font because different systems have different default fonts. And we come on to my H1 right here. Let's go right here and say the font family. And right now it is a serif. So if I hit save on that, nothing will actually change. That's the default. The serifs are the little like pieces that sort of hang off on the font. So I could change that to a sa serif. So it's no serif in French term right there. Uh, and you can see it switches over and you could switch yours to a sa serif. And if you're on Windows, it will probably look the same. If you're on a Mac, it will potentially look like a different serif font or sa serif font, I should say. And to really see some of the differences that can come in instead of a sa serif, we could switch this over to a fantasy. And the fantasy on Windows is really boring. I don't know how this is the fantasy font. If you're on a Mac, it would actually be Papyrus, which looks much more fantasy than Impact does, which is what I have now. Uh, and then another one that we could do is Cursive. Uh, cursive, I think I spelled that right, which will give me, of all things, Comic Sans. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but that's what it is. So um, yeah, that, and I don't even know what that would be if I was on a Mac. So. Uh, these are the system default fonts it's using and it just goes to whatever is classified as that font on the system. Now we can also give specific font families if we want instead. So instead of being cursive, I could say Arial and hit save. And if I refresh that, I'm actually getting Arial now. Now that will probably be the same as my Sancerra font because that's probably the default uh, on a Windows machine, but you can put the name of the font you want there. The problem with putting the name of the font though is that you're relying on the person who visits the site to have that font installed on their computer. So for an example, there's this pretty cool font uh, called Jazzier. And I think Jazzier would be a very uh, nice font to have on, you know, as a headline or heading font. It looks like this, a very snazzy font. I don't know, I, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, and let's say I wanted to use this on my website. Well, then could I just come here and say Jazzier? and hit save and then I'm gonna hit refresh and I get a, just it goes back to the default font that I had before. And it's because I don't have Jazzier installed on my computer and you probably don't either. And most people probably don't because it's a premium font and I'm guessing most people haven't purchased and downloaded that font and installed it on their computer. So I can't just come in and just choose any font I want. I have to rely on knowing that the user has that font. So one way we can do that is actually to use something called a font stack. And the way a font stack works is I might say I want Jazzier, but if Jazzier doesn't work, I want to go to Garamond because that's a Gara, Garamond like that. And if I hit save now and I refresh, we can actually see the font has changed. It's not using Jazzier, it's using Garamond. And the way a font stack will work is it looks at this font, it goes, oh, I don't know what that is. I can't find that anywhere. So I'm going to use Garamond instead. And then maybe somebody doesn't have Garamond on their system. So you could actually put in a sa serif as, or no, in this case, it wouldn't be a sa serif, it'd be a serif fallback. So Jazzier is the one I want, doesn't work, go to Garamond. Garamond, if it doesn't happen to work, we'll just go to the system default serif. And so we can build in as many fallbacks as you want. And in VS Code, you'll actually see some of the classic old school ones. As soon as you do font family, it offers you up a whole bunch of options. Uh, that you can use and there's a whole, you know, you can see there's a bunch here and they're the, generally speaking, they're kind of long. So let's just go with uh, this one where you can see it's doing Gilsaz, Gilsaz MT, Calibri, Trebuchet, and then finally the Sans Serif all the way at the end there. And we can refresh and see what that looks like uh, right there where I'm getting Gilsaz coming in. And just really fast, you'll notice here uh, that inside, you'll notice that like Calibri here is just written like that, whereas some of these other ones are in uh, single quotation marks. It could be double quotation marks too. Either one would work fine. And the reason it's putting them in quotation marks is because there's a space between them. So if I just have a single word, you can write it without. But if you have fonts that have spaces in their names, then you have to put that inside of quotation marks. And if you want to be safe, you could just put everything inside of a quotation mark, uh, even the sans serif here at the end. You could do that and the same thing would work no problem at all. And right now I've been mentioning that we can't use any font we want because if the person doesn't have it installed, it won't work. There are ways of actually having custom fonts that you can use 
on your site. We're not going to be touching on that within this course, but it's something that you could look into later on, either looking into Google fonts or self-hosting fonts. And then that means if somebody visits your site, you can provide the font for them. Uh, but it's a little bit out of the scope of what I want to cover in this one. But just in case you're like, how do I get a nicer font than what we have available in these font stacks? Uh, you can do that. And right now our project just has one font being used through the entire thing. We're gonna look at setting that up in a future lesson. Uh, if you want for now, just to get a little bit of practice in and explore some of the default styling in there, it actually encourage you to go through and just try some of the different uh, font stacks that are being provided by VS Code there because they're all pretty safe old school ones. And so play around with them, see what they look like. And then when you're ready, we can move on to the next lesson.